thinkers are the deadliest men. Liam Brady was playing for Internazionale in Syria when he said this to Hugh McIlvenny in The Observer in 1984. Brady had won two Italian titles with Juventus and was discussing the stylistic contrast between Italy and England, where Brady had been such an elegant force at Arsenal for a decade, and was the Professional Footballers Association's Player of the Year in 1979. The public don't necessarily want a lot of hectic, brainless action, Brady added. They like to see quality, thinking players. Around 20 years earlier Danny Blanchflower, another eloquent Irish midfielder, and an Observer columnist, had said I think, therefore I'm dangerous. Blanchflower had captained Northern Ireland to the World Cup quarterfinals in 1958, the same year he was voted Footballer of the Year. He won the award again in 1961. Irish football regulators did not always enjoy Blanchflower they branded him an out-and-out -out communist for standing up for players' rights. As he said, they considered him dangerous because he thought and read. On retirement in 1964 Blanche Flower quoted F. Scott Fitzgerald. It was an untypical response from a footballer, perhaps, but it was typical Blanche Flower. As his Tottenham teammate Jimmy Greaves said lyrical, poetic and poignant, to me Danny was the Oscar Wilde of Windsor Park. Over the coming week, as Northern Ireland prepared to face Switzerland in the Republic of Ireland ready themselves for Denmark in World Cup qualifying playoffs, there will be comment on virtues such as spirit and raucous energy. Less will be said about another strand of Irish football intelligence. Martin O'Neill was starting a law degree when he scored for a distillery against Barcelona. Photograph Brian Lawless Bod comes in different forms, academic, street-wise, intuitive. The current Republic manager, Martin O'Neill, embodies these he was starting a law degree at Queen's University, Belfast, when he scored for a distillery against Barcelona in the European Cup Winners' Cup in 1971. Similarly, the Northern Ireland manager, Michael O'Neill, was doing his A-levels when he was bought by Newcastle United from the Irish League club Coleraine in 1987. O'Neill continued to attend school in Newcastle after he signed but, as he says of being in the first team at 18 alongside Paul Gascoigne it becomes difficult going to school as a Newcastle United player. So O'Neill did not complete his maths a level. Then, seven years later, playing for Northern Ireland, O'Neill made the most of time in Belfast before an international I went to Queen's and sat the Open University Maths exam. The game was on a Wednesday, I sat the exam on a Tuesday. Michael O'Neill went into accountancy when he finished playing. He and his namesake Martin are sharp, cerebral and part of a tradition dating back to the dawn of Irish football. Michael O'Neill went into accountancy when he finished playing. Photograph Jane Barlow, but in the first season of the Irish League, 189,091, a club from Coarmaw, Milford, joined seven from Belfast. Milford's goalkeeper was a 25-year-old called William McCrum. He conceded 62 goals that first season, but well before then what bothered him more was unsporting behavior. Soccer, as it was, was emerging from rugby football and it was rough. McCrum had crimes and punishment on his mind, so this young keeper came up with a solution the penalty kick. Initially rejected in 1890 and scorned as the Irishman's motion, in June the next year McCrum's idea became Law 14 of Association Football, as it remains. The man who invented the penalty, who added justice and drama to the sport, was a thoughtful goalkeeper. From Armagh, the Newcastle United football team, circa 1905, with Bill McCracken on the far right of the middle row. Photograph Popper Photogetti images Macrum was the first of two Irishmen to change the geometry, tactics and rhythm of the global game. The second was Bill McCracken. From the Falls Road in Belfast, McCracken may not be renowned today but in his era he was infamous. He was born in 1883 and British newspapers were serializing McCracken's life story by 1914. He left his local club distillery for Newcastle United in 1904 and won three league titles in an FA Cup in his first six years on Tyneside. More than this, though, McCracken earned unequaled hostility across England from fans who resented a tactic he perfected offside. So effective was McCracken he provoked pitch invasions. More significant, in 1925, the offside rule was changed, largely because of him. Previously three players were required to be behind an attacker receiving the ball. 
After McCracken it was two. I was an overlapping wing back before the term was invented, he said, in 1919. The Manchester Guardian's Don Davies, killed in the Munich air crash, called McCracken the Irish Mephistopheles, he made people think, and that has never been a popular mission. Later, as a Newcastle scout, McCracken brought the young George East Ham back to England from the Irish League club Ards. It was East Ham who later fought Newcastle in the courts, initiating football's original freedom of movement ruling in 1963. McCracken, banned from playing for Ireland for 10 years due to a paid dispute, may have passed on some truculence. East Ham called him an authentic football pioneer. McCracken would begin jaunty Irish reports with From the Land of Spuds and Buttermilk. Another original was Peter Doherty, from Mag Arafelt. When last year Lionel Messi and Luis Suarez scored a joint penalty for Barcelona, some commentators immediately referenced Robert Pires and Thierry Henry in 2005, others mentioned Johan Cruyff and Jesper Olsen in 1982. But as Stanley Matthews said many years ago, he saw Doherty perform the penalty trick in 1945. Len Shackleton called Doherty the genius among geniuses. Harry Gregg says Doherty was a man apart. When Blanche Flower led that Irish team at the 1958 World Cup, Doherty was manager. They qualified ahead of Italy and Portugal, Blanche Flower and Jimmy McElroy producing the Doherty penalty against the Portuguese. The referee was so baffled he disallowed it. McElroy was known as the brain of Burnley, English champions in 1960. Via McCrum, McCracken and McElroy, Jackie Carey and Johnny Giles, through George Best to Brady and Restless Roy Keane and the O'Neills, Irish football has produced more than scufflers. It has a history of original thinkers who understand Blanche Flower's nuance winning ISNT everything, but wanting to win is. Green shoots Irish football histories by Michael Walker de Calberton.